This is Lesson 10 of the Gospel of John for March 9th, uh, 2022. Father, we thank you that you're with us. We thank you that we still have the freedom to study God's Word and to lift up the name of Jesus. Be with us now as we study, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin with uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light, the foss. Now, foss is the essence of light, light itself. We ran into it first in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, where uh, the created uh, universe at that point was dark, stormy, uh, ugly, and uh, God said, let there be light. Now, it was the Hebrew uh, equivalent of false light as the essence of light. And so there was light. I am the light, the essence of light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And there's two great words here, false light, zoe, and zoe means, of course, life. But when it's written this way, Z-O-E, then it's the life that God has, that Jesus and the Godhead has. And uh, so it's, it's the light of life, the particular kind of light. So the Pharisees said to him, you're testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Then Jesus answered and said to them, even if I testify by myself, my testimony is true. I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you don't know where I came, come from or where I am going. Now, earlier, they talked about where Jesus came from, and, and the people standing about said, this is Jesus the carpenter's son from Nazareth. And so they kind of put him down because they said, what good has ever come out of Nazareth? And, and they said, search the, search the records. No prophet has ever come out of Galilee, particularly out of Nazareth. And what he says, I know where I'm going and where I came from, and you don't know. You judge, that is, distinguish or decide according to the flesh. I'm not judging anyone. Now, we've talked about judge before or judging in the sense of condemnation or not having condemnation. But this is judge in the sense of deciding which kind of person is this or, or these. You judge according to the flesh. You just look at somebody and you decide that they are bad or good. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone in it but I and the Father who sent me. Even in your law, it has been written that the testimony of two men is true. I am he who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. Therefore, the, the, what he's saying is we have two witnesses which justify 
of my truth. So they were saying to him, Where is your father? And Jesus answered, You know, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. And previously, one of his uh, apostles asked him, uh, Jesus, let us see the Father. Show us the Father. And Jesus responded and said, You've been with me so long, and you have seen me. And if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, because the Father and I are one. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. No one seized him because his hour had not yet come, and he frequently points out that he is on a schedule. And he came to die. He came to be put to death on the cross and to be raised from the dead. But the time is not yet. It's not the right time. And so things that might happen to him don't at this time. Then he said again to them, I go away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sins. Where I'm going, you cannot come. And there's a double meaning to this, that you can't go with heaven to me. Heaven the third heaven is where God lives, and you cannot go there. And besides, you do not have spiritual life. You do not have eternal life. And so you cannot find me or go with me. So the Jews were saying, Surely he will not kill himself, will he? Commit suicide. Since he says, where I'm going, you cannot come. And he was saying to them, You're from below, I'm from above. You're of this world, I am not of this world. Now, this is an interesting thing to consider. When we think of heaven and speak of heaven, we think of... we. Up, we look up, point up, the heavens up there. And when we think of below, we down, we point down. So that hell in our concept is below. But Hades is also, and Hades is simply the life that comes after death, uh, the uh, light, the life that takes place beneath the surface of the earth. And so, you're from below. Now, I, in a sense, I think that the King James Version of the Bible did us a disservice by consistently translating Hades, the underworld, as hell. Now, we have a very different concept of hell we understand it as the lake of fire, the eternal burning where people go for an eternity separated from God. He said, you're of this world. I'm not of this world. You come from below. I come from above. Therefore, I said to you, you'll die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, that is, the Messiah, the Son of God, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. You must, if you do not want to die in your sins, you must come to me in faith and in trust. So they were saying to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What have I been saying to you from the beginning? I've told you repeatedly. 
I have many things to speak and to judge concerning you. But he who sent me is true. God the Father who sent me is true. And the things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world. They did not realize that he had been speaking to them about the Father. It's not even clear that they had a good concept of who the Father was. And it has been true that the Orthodox Jew, the ordinary Jew, is is fiercely monotheistic. They think there is only one God. There are not three gods. There is not a trinity. Only one God. That God did not have a son. And that God's spirit is simply the mindset of that God. So the concept of the Trinity is disregarded by the ordinary Jew. They hadn't realized that he had been speaking to them about the Father, who is like him, the same as him, but separate from him. And Jesus said, when you lift up, and the word is uh, hupso, exalt, when you uh, lift up or exalt the Son of Man, and remember that Son of Man was what Jesus frequently called himself, but he's Son of Man in the sense of he comes from mankind in his human and his human presence, then you will know that I meant he. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He's not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Now, there's a little... A little bit of a puzzle here. Does he mean that God the Father physically is with him all the time? Well, we understand that God the Father lives in the third heaven. We also understand that now, at least, Jesus is in the third heaven sitting on the throne of God at his right hand. And when we say that Jesus is in us, we actually mean that he is in us in the form of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. So he says, he who sent me is with me. He's not left me alone. I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he spoke these things, many of the people came to believe in him. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, if you continue to obey, understand, and worship me, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples, students, followers of mine. But true disciples, not those who simply were entranced by Jesus' doing miracles and thought that this was a good deal, but they didn't really believe in him as such. They answered him, We're Abraham's descendants and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? And Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. 
And what he's pointing out is you become the slave of someone inevitably. And if you are enslaved to sin, if you commit sin consistently, you then become the slave of sin and the slave of Satan. The slave, which you are, does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. And if you are the slave of sin and the slave of Satan, I'm going to destroy that on my death on the cross. And you cannot remain in that house forever. You're a slave and not a son. Only if you become a son of God can you have eternal life and live in the presence of the Godhead forever. So, the son does remain in the house forever. If the Son makes you free, you'll be free indeed, in the truest and most complete sense of the word. Now, we often think we're free, and these people thought that by being the descendants of Abraham, they were free and not enslaved to anyone. Well, I'll repeat, Jesus is saying, you're going to be slaves to somebody. And you will have to choose. You're going to be the slave of sin and the slave of Satan. Or you're going to choose to become a slave of me and my father. That is, you will come to me in faith and in trust and will be adopted by God my Father. And when you are adopted to him, then you will have eternal life. You will live in his house freely forever. And he said further, I know that you're Abraham's descendant, yet you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I think we need to stop here. We had to cut the lesson a little short because of some discussion that took place beforehand, which is not really related to the lesson, and I'm not going to mention them. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being here, for blessing us, for keeping us safe, and for preserving our freedom to worship you. Father, we ask you to continue to do that and be with us. We ask that you hear our petitions, and that as we go from this place, you keep us free, safe, and open to your word. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.